So hi everyone and welcome to this mentorship session of the AIBC Hack by Planance. Today we have the pleasure of being joined by Valeria Maximovic. So Valeria, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, today we're going to discuss Web3 grants and public funding. So Valeria, the floor is yours. Thanks again a lot for joining. Thank you, Stella and Nicolas. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to share my knowledge on the public uh, granting, grant and fundraising in general. Um, and hello, everyone who, who might be uh, watching this. Hi to ABC community. My name is Valeria Maksimovic. I am uh, myself a, a tech startup founder in the energy sector, and as well, I am a public grant um, advisor and consultant focusing on Europe region mostly. So today we'll be talking focused on Europe. Unfortunately, I am not that good with um, Asia region or African region or um, Arabic region of the world or American. I will be focusing entirely on Europe, but uh, I have some connections to many parts of the world who are focusing on public grant uh, in that parts of the world as well. So hope what I will be saying will be useful anyway. And in general, like public grant uh, system works uh, pretty much the same everywhere. It's just that agencies are different, but the idea is uh, very similar. So I will be just sharing my screen to uh, to have some uh, notes. Um, uh, do you guys know if I'm allowed to share screen? Because I don't see the option. Hey, please give me a second. I'm going to enable it. Yeah, it seems like I can. Can you see my screen? Oh, yes, yes, it's visible. Yes, it's working now. Perfect. Uh, so, um, I just took as the first I, just, I took a, a great um, uh, a great graphic from the ABC hackathon. So so in general, there are three types of uh, public grants. As you can imagine, it's the first one is international, focusing on more than one country. That one is uh, uh, usually the biggest one. Uh, for example, if we're talking about Europe, it can be maybe you know it's famous EIC accelerator where you can uh, where you apply with a project and you can get up to uh, two two million euros for the start of the project and it can be even projects that uh, are very young or is I think it's TRL uh, seven like technology regional level seven it means that uh, uh, like apply applicants can have only like a prototype or few paying clients so it's very cool for um, tech startups that and, and founders that are just starting uh, so then there are um, different agencies from European Commission who provide support as well, financial for the uh, tech startups, uh, including Web3, of course. And these are, for example, EAT Digital or EAT Health or EAT Urban Mobility or INA Energy. Um, so these ones are focusing, as the name implies, they are focusing on particular sectors. That's why my advice is to, when you guys present um, or uh, submit um, uh, Web3 projects, projects to public funding, it's better to have interdisciplinary uh, projects because simply because it's easy to match it with particular grant and to, have, to increase chances of receiving the grant. Then there are uh, national grants, which are a bit usually smaller than international, but they're still very big. If you're talking such countries as, for example, as Spain, it's a grant called Neotech, and it's just um, a grant where you can get, I think, up to 1 million euros, but it's less than international, but it's still very good. And then if we're talking about Czech Republic, for example, uh, here we have a Czech Invest Agency, it's from Ministry of Trade and Tachiro, it's 
uh, technology agency of Czech Republic. It, it supports tech projects a lot. Um, there are a few like uh, details that you need to know. For example, some grants require collaboration with other parties like other companies or research centers or some other institutions or or some grants that require international collaboration so there have be there should be like two different companies from two different countries who are participated on a same project same project and submitting us as a consortium so there are some details for that you when you see a grant you need to carefully uh, read the requirements and winning criteria and then there are regional grants they are usually from innovation centers or from some local institutions some institutions who support small and medium businesses these are very cool as well to boost some uh, uh, some first steps in your company and as well uh, these are good for um, yeah grants in general are good because they're not dilutive so you don't have to return it unlike fund fundraising like from, from private entities and uh, now we'll be going to speak I will speak about uh, a bit of, like a bit of tips that we my team and I we faced when or I when I advise companies for uh, grant uh, receiving the grant uh, I just made a list so first I already touched it it should be interdisciplinary projects when we are talking about web3 I think it very makes sense to web3 uh, or crypto based projects because they're usually very interdisciplinary um, one important thing is that like for example you have an innovation that you design some uh, i don't know let's say a trading platform and it's focused on um only like uh for example economy uh but then and you wanna you see a great grant for example from i don't know a country where your uh company based in or another another country uh and then you're like, oh, this is not exactly my topic. But then you can think about and to apply for the grant, you don't have to apply with the product, but you also can apply with the project. So you can divide your company into different projects or your, your innovation, and then you can apply to different grants with different projects to co cover um, different grants and increase probability to get some grants. Uh, then, as I was already touching, um, you, it's better to find strong partners, even for the grants that do not require collaboration on some, pro, uh, some common project, uh, for the purpose that evaluators will see that you're backed up with good, um, good strong partners. These can be research centers or university where you studied or some bigger companies. Uh, if you want to find some research projects in Europe or, or companies that you want to collaborate with, there is a database called Cortis, where, where the one you can use for searching for international partner. Uh, then it's very important that you need to present an innovation and it should be disruptive innovation. For example, for EAC Accelerator, their goal is to support very disruptive, high impact, high risk projects. So the more risk it has, the better, the more impact it has, the better, the more uh, uh, it, it is disrupts the, the sector you're focusing, the better. Uh, so then there is another tip that or maybe it's a barrier, but I don't see it as a barrier, that some regional and uh, national grants you need to write in local languages. For example, for Spain, you need to write in Spanish, for Czech Republic, you need to write in Czech, and etc. Or for Austria, you have to buy, uh, you have to write in, in German, but it's not a problem. You can still write in English, but you can just hire um, a freelance translator who will really fast translate you the the project i suggest to use translator as a person because uh if you just translate it with google or deeple it, it will not uh, be it will be visible that it wasn't written by a native and then it will really decrease the chances that's for sure uh then i really advise to read winning criteria first and then to start writing the proposal because uh, kind of, yeah, it doesn't make sense to write a proposal and then you will be uh, changing it if you see that, oh, look, they are supporting, let's say, only, uh, I don't know, uh, projects that are already um, mature or something. So really start with carefully re reviewing the criteria. 
Uh, usually the grants are aimed at very innovative, high risk, high impact tech projects uh, that I already said. Uh, yeah, uh, when you write a proposal, you need to provide a lot of evidences and numbers to back it up. Uh, you can use some uh, companies that provide market research, like, uh, for example, Frost and Civilian or other, like, um, other agencies that provide some market research, but you can also find a lot of things online for free. Um, yeah, like always think of big, like of big of the planet of different countries, always address some sustainable development goal, uh, goals um, and describe like how your innovation will change and help people. Uh, yeah, you need to have strong core team and advisors. Uh, that's, I think it's always important, even for a simple, for general fundraising. Uh, yeah, and uh, actually some of the grants, they require co-investment, either from your company, internal investment, or from external sources like, um, uh, external sources like private uh, investor, VC, or angel investors. Um, yeah, uh, about, I forgot to say one thing, actually, like, for example, your company, so first of all, of course, to apply for the grants, you have to have in a company incorporated somewhere. For Europe, I know for sure that to apply for international grants, like EAC Accelerator or some EAT agency, uh, like Urban Mobility or Health or Digital, uh, you have to have uh, a company located in Europe, so in one of the European countries. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, a big country. It can be a lot of people register company in Estonia. It's very, uh, um, very easy to register a startup there or a company there, incorporate a company there, or a Cyprus as well. It's an easy one fast enough when you need to incorporate a company and then you can apply for the grants. Uh, but for some regional, you have to have an entity. You don't have to be incorporated. You don't have to be headquartered in the country, but you have to have um, at least uh, a branch. So for Spanish grants, you need to have a branch or have a incorporation in Spain, etc. So, uh, so in general steps for applying, you, okay, you incorporate a company, you create a team. It's better when you um, have some first paying clients, but it's not a necessity at all. You have to have a prototype uh, that you can show. Uh, that's important. Uh, yeah, and then you select an appropriate, appropriate funding call. Do not forget that some calls, they are opened only once a year, or some of them, they have continuous evaluation, and then it will require you, like in general public grants, it can take you one to two months to write. If it, it's a one person, it can be sh shorter, but in general, it's uh, if, it, if we're speaking about a lot of money, it really requires a big... Uh, writing a big business plan and uh, with every aspect, all the risks, all the uh, covering all the part of innovation can face can face technically and and business wise. So then, so first you select a the funding call. Then you need to, or it's not a requirement, but for some grants you need to find some partners, like companies or uh, research centers. Then, uh, yeah, you just create an account on a, it usually has like grants usually have their own portal. Then you write your proposal. It's better always to write proposal outside the plot, the, the, the platform. So you can review it a million times and then you just copy the, copy the final result in the end. And then um, it, when you write the proposal, your main goal is persuade uh, funders to support their in initiative actually not founders, but persuade evaluators to support your project. It, every sentence you write should be persuasive. It's not like a sales uh, kind of language, but you need to persuade them. Like, look, for example, 
uh, if you're talking about if your if your project is about let's say correlated with health, you say uh, we so, so solve the problem let's say of longevity, and then uh, you say how many uh, older people they are, which problems they suffer from, uh, or if your uh, project is focused on um, on financial on banking, you provide uh, some numbers on that let's say I don't know how many people suffered from silicon value uh, silicon value bank crashing uh, what it really means how to avoid it like every sentence you write you have to pursue like have some evidence behind this and it doesn't make sense to use uh, actually chat GPT or other like scale not or other uh, like AI assisted writing because they write like a lot of we say a lot of water so sentences without the meaning and evaluators they spot it they don't like it they don't uh, see if, if if it's written just to have some rewards they usually do not support this kind of projects they really need to see that the, the research was done and they need to be pers persuaded why they have to say yes i give for free like public money to that project in the end of the day it's public money so you have to remember that uh then you wait for the results it can take from two to seven months so it's really like a long run but i think it's okay it's not that big it's not that long uh then uh actually what happens after i didn't write what happens after you receive the money uh, usually there are um, you sign the contract that you will be receiving the money uh, usually the money are uh, it's different, but the money uh, usually they are received in three batches. So in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end of the project. In every project, you specify the timeline more or less. Let's say it's a project for two years, uh, or some grants are received upfront. It's very rare that the, the 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 project is reimbursed after the project. It's not that usual is usually like research projects, but it's not very usual. So, and then you write the reports uh, about how you're doing, what are your KPIs, how you're achieving them. There may be some calls with the, uh, with some incubation managers or some grant um, even like uh, supervisors, but it's not nothing scary. A lot of uh, companies succeed with this type of grants because uh and i don't think it's kind of a shame when you use grants because for the, the development you need to have up, up front uh, a lot of upfront money to develop a, a tech product so it's really okay uh so if you uh, have any more specific questions i will be happy to answer you uh maybe because i don't know exactly the, where the audience come from so um, I will be happy, let's say, to use the power of my connections to find a proper grant for you or something. It's really worth trying. The more you apply for grants, the more you chances you have to get the, the grant. And then it's just super uh, supportive for your projects and you can just develop with the, with the funds that you received. So that's all. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, Dear organizers, do you have some questions in, in the, or on behalf of the audience or what you think they will be interested in? Yes, um, I have one question here that would be, so what are the benefits of applying for uh, grants and public funding compared with applying for uh, basically VC funding? Sure, that's a very good question. So it's basically uh, two types of fundraising, uh, let's say private and then pu public. Uh, basically the benefits, like the main, the main benefit, uh, I don't know if it's obvious or it's, uh, I think it's obvious that um, for the VC funding, you will need to give a part of your company. Like the less you give, the better for you. The more you give, the worse for you because in the in the in the future you will not be able to raise money that easily if you give a lot portion of your company to the VC. 
uh, with public grants, you do not have to give any uh, equity of your company. So entire company stays for yourself. But uh, if you um, uh, if you receive the grant, you, what you need to do is only to report your activities. So you need to you need to prove that you are using the grant as you described in the application in the proposal. So this is like the main benefit that I see uh, from from like or differences. Uh, one like one thing that you need to do when you receive public grant, you need to most of all most of the times you need to share this information publicly, like on your website, or you need to make a post that this project is supported from this uh, uh, from these public uh, sources, uh, and that's all. I don't know if uh, Stella, I, I answered your question. I don't think that uh, there are many other benefits apart from that. It's kind of it's kind of money that you don't have to return and but you have to make a result like you have to uh, submit the, the, the reports mm -hmm. but it's the same with the VC funding you will also have to show the results but it also helps from my perspective it helps with fund, private fund fundraising because if you say that look we raised I don't know 1 million euros from public and then our company as well costs much more than it would be cost otherwise without the grant. Uh, so I think it really helps. And the more you're trying to get uh, this money, the better. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions from the participants? I don't see any other question from uh, my end. So I think it was pretty clear. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, like I really liked like uh, Web3 and uh, crypto projects because as I said, it can be link, linked to various sectors and it can be covered, like the grant uh, applications that can be covered are really wide. And then if you just, um, divide your innovation into several projects and you apply the different projects to different grants, uh, then it really, in different from different areas, let's say, then it's really cool. It really uh, increases your chances to get the grant. Thank you. Maybe one last question. Do you think that the public sector um, is open to fund Web3 and crypto projects now, uh, or is there still because of the, the the market is kind of in a bad place? Let's say I I'm afraid that uh, institutions are not necessarily very friendly towards a crypto project that seek public funding. What's your opinion about that? Uh, I personally saw projects that were supported from public grants, uh, crypto projects. So um, my opinion is the following, like as I said, as I stressed um, like um, several times, that um, you will increase, crypto projects will increase the chances if they link their project to other sectors that are kind of, uh, they, 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 that have problems and lack solutions, let's say as an energy sector. For example, me, myself, I come from energy sector and me, we at Enneagram, it's, it's my product. We uh, create a platform to help people to save on energy bills and to unlock passive income from selling electricity to the grid. And uh, our project is one of the things that will be there, one of the area that will be directing our project is, uh, is um, blockchain and decentralization. So, uh, and when, if you can, like if a crypto project can prove that they improve something already existed or they exist that is existed or they solve a significant real market problem or a real people problem then i don't see why evaluators will say i don't think that they have like prejudice towards uh, like crypto they like have a blacklist on crypto projects and i never heard something of that and i have colleagues who help applying to 
uh, different grants. I didn't hear that that they don't uh, the evaluators are negative towards crypto projects. It's only yes, I'm saying as well, repeating all the time that it, like once you have a you have linked it to a different area, and once you if you can prove that you are really your your technology is improving a current uh, system or say people can earn money or people can, uh, I don't know, you solve people's pro health problem or financial problem or security problem, then I don't see uh, that, that it has a, as a minus. This is my opinion. I don't know. Uh, maybe some other people in, have different experience. I never uh, had something negative. Okay, we see a question from Constantin uh, in the chat. What funds can we approach to receive grant for a Web3 mobile app? Uh, that's a good uh, question. I will need to know the details. Like if Konstantin Kov can just tell us, I don't know wh which country we are or which area of the world we are speaking about, this is the first thing that I want to know. The second is maybe what the mobile app does, like, and uh, I, I uh, yeah, if Konstantin can describe it, then we will try to match you guys to the to the relevant uh, uh, grant. But again, I will read the question again, what funds can we approach to receive the grant? Yeah, yeah. So I will need to know the location or like if you guys have a company incorporated uh, and what does the app uh, do? Stella, do you know some details from Constantine or? Nope, I don't, I don't know. Um, let's wait for his answer. We try to give our players to, to receive extra income worldwide. So I guess it's a gaming uh, company, gaming guild, uh, or something like that. Uh, uh, it's a move to earn up. Uh, I guess this might be more suitable uh, for health purposes if they try to identify partnerships for improving the health of particular, let's say, uh, people because they motivate them to exercise a lot. Maybe they can identify organizations uh, from Erasmus Plus or uh, definitely the, a lot of public blockchains, uh, they will be either sitting in giving grants related to move to where. Um, uh, Constantine, if you are, a, 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 let's create a, a Telegram group and then uh, you can send us more details and we'll be able to connect you with public blockchain grants or if Valeria has any expertise um in this segment yeah actually nicolas it's exactly what i was saying yeah that it's cool move to learn yeah the kind of that you um, you will have to i don't know for sure constantine you have uh, your target audience let's say if it's young people you can um, even like you can address big international european grants like the ac accelerator if but for that you will have to show that you solve you're solving you're solving the real people's problem let's say you write i don't know uh young people they do not move they sit in front of the computer all the time for that you they have i don't know problem with their body with their health with their eyes etc uh, and for that a lot of money like public money are spent to cure them afterwards so but we are designing this uh, or we are developing this game uh, that helps to improve health the, the, yeah that, that's very good direction like say let's say you can address eat digital or eat health uh organizations that exactly focus on like something that, that you do just always try, try to find like uh, the problem that you're solving. And if this problem is big enough to, for us, for the society to, to solve, or also if it's big enough to, it has commercial potential that as well. And this is regarding like international grants, but uh, it, for the, national grants and regional i will really need to know like which country you're incorporated in it's very important for that like 
or if, in which country you plan to uh, have a branch. Because, for example, if you're located, if I'm talking about Europe and you're located outside Europe, it will be impossible to get a national grant. And in, in even a grant in Europe, you will have to find, open a branch to apply. But uh, it's okay. It's normal practice. A lot of people do it. Mm 